At this place in history, we're on the Otter Creek in Pittsburgh. I'm with Executive Director of the Vermont Historical Society, Steve Perkins, to tell us about this awesome covered bridge behind us. We are. So, you know, there are four covered bridges in Pittsburgh, and we're going to explore one of them, talk about covered bridges in Vermont. Um, but a little note while we're standing here on the Otter Creek. So, you have this name. Pittsford, and it's named after a ford over the Otter Creek. And the ford was right close to where we're standing, and it was called Pitts Ford, so hence the name Pittsford. But Makes now sense. we're going to go check out this bridge. This is so cool, and I love covered bridges, but I have to admit, I, I don't know why they're covered. Is that a silly question? It's totally not a silly qu uh, question, you know, and folks come to Vermont all the time to see our covered bridges. But if you look at what this bridge is made of, you can see it's all wood. So let's think about winters in Vermont with snow and ice and even just the rain in the summer. Quickly, everything's going to rot out. So it's a really good way of making sure that the bridge lasts for a long time. So you've got a roof on it. It's going to keep that snow and that ice off of it. The second reason of why it's covered is it helps put the structure, the engineering of the bridge um, that helps support it can be above the level of the deck rather than below the level of the deck. Can we talk about that, how it's built? I'm fascinated by these wooden pegs. I know, it's it's really pretty. And you, you look at this lattice work and the name of this construction is actually called the Town Lattice Truss. But goes back to a guy, an architect who lived in Connecticut named Ithiel Town. And um, he needed to make a little bit of money. So he said, oh, what if I come up with a design that anybody can build. And as an architect, he knew that if you take a bunch of little boards and you put them across each other, like we see here, and create this lattice work, you know, think about the stuff you put under your porch, um, that it's strong, but anybody can build it. You don't need an engineer to put a bunch of cross, uh, you know, cross beams up like this. So he patented the design and sent it out far and wide. And all of these little towns all throughout the United States used his design to build these bridges and he became rich. He made a ton of money off of it. But yeah, town lattice truss. And like I said, it creates the wall of the bridge and then they were able to just put that uh, roof up above it. But this is what's carrying the load not what's underneath the bridge. And very little, if any, metal. Right? Virtually no metal. And this goes back to construction of the 19th and 18th century anyway. It uses these big pegs and some people, tree nails is what they're called, but you may have heard it. it's, it's been shortened to trennels or even trunnels. Sometimes we hear that, that called, but it's a shortened of tree nails, which is a big wooden peg. They drill the holes and pound these suckers through there, and that's what held up the structure. So it seems like all of these bridges have, have their own unique story or identity. Is there something special about this bridge? There is something special <laughs> about this bridge. I found this fascinating. So one of Vermont's biggest natural disasters was the flood of 1927. And and we lost many, many covered bridges during that flood. This one, in fact, was floated up off of its piers and it went down the Otter Creek about a mile and ended up in a farmer's field. So well built that that winter, they jacked the thing up, moved it up the ice, put it back on its piers, and this bridge continued to serve, you know, this, this town and this crossing really up until the 1980s. It's just for foot traffic now, but it, it used to be for cars and, and carriages, right? Yeah, and we even have old postcards showing people having picnics and, and looking at this bridge and driving across it. It really became a, a good tourist destination, um, but it, it became a, a point where it really couldn't take automobile traffic. So in 1991, the State um, Division for Historic Preservation shored it up so you can see there's a lot of you know new construction in here that's uh, stabilizing the bridge. And it's a place where you can come, have your picnic, visit this bridge, and you can really look at how it's made, how it worked, and then the views down the Otter Creek are just beautiful through the Absolutely windows. Gorgeous. Lessons in engineering and bridge building. Along the beautiful Otter Creek at this place in history.